Is the ZV-E10 still a good camera in this day and age? Well, the answer to that question, it might depend, but by the end of this video, you'll know exactly if this is the camera for you. So the Sony ZV-E10 is a mirrorless camera that was released back in 2021. The camera is designed specifically for vlogging and content creation in mind, with features such as Vari Angle LCD screens, direct three capsule microphone, and a whole dedicated movie button. The question is obviously though, is it still worth it? All right, so I've had this camera since like before it was released and I've used it a whole lot. And you know, in this video, we'll be going over where I think this camera shines, where I think it uh, falls a little bit, where it sucks, you know, and obviously trying to answer the million billion dollar question, is it still worth your uh, pretty shiny little pennies, you know? All right, so let's quickly start with the build quality. As you can see, it is small and really lightweight, like it's it's smaller than the Sony A6400, which is a small camera, you know. It's also pretty robust, I'm not totally sure what it's made out of, but I've <laughs> dropped it a few times and it's uh, still working flawlessly, so that's that's good. As you can also see, because it's so small, it's, uh, it's a tiny grip. Some people don't, mo <laughs> might not like it, but uh, I like that you can just put it in your pocket easily and it doesn't take any, you know, space at all. It also has a flip screen, so you can, let's see if we can do it like this, you can flip the screen and, and like, this is, this was a game changer for uh, Sony, APS-C, I don't know if you remember, but they had like this weird uh, flip screen once that sucked. <laughs> but now this is like a game changer for vlogging and you can see yourself when you vlog. I like this a whole lot. The one thing you will also see and I'll touch on more later in the video is that this, there is no viewfinder. I, I don't like that when I'm taking photography, but I mostly use this for filming, so it doesn't really matter that. I don't use the viewfinder there. But it also makes the camera this small because there's no viewfinder on it, you know. What more can I say? We can talk about the battery. It's equipped with these small batteries here. When you're using one of these here, just have a many of them in the back backpack these don't last that long and then it has like this uh, power zoomy thingy that is also like a standard in the ZV lineup right now like they call it clear image zoom so in the 4k footage you can si zoom into 1.5x without losing any quality and it's actually pretty nice so it's not more much more to say about the build quality of this camera now if you take a look at the specs you know what's under the hood on this camera then it's equipped with a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor and a Bion CX image processor and it can shoot both stills and videos with a video resolution up to 4k 30 frames per second now if you want to get that uh, super slowmatic uh, slowmatic if you want to get that super slow motion footage you can get 120 frames per second but then you need to go down to full HD. This camera also offers advanced autofocus technology, including real-time eye autofocus, as well as real-time tracking, which can keep your subject in focus even when they are moving. It makes keeping your subject in focus pretty easy. It also has a wide range of ISO sensitivity from 100 to 32,000, which can obviously help you in low-light conditions. However, I feel that uh, the smaller sensor in this camera, it doesn't do that well when you start to pump the ISO. You can, uh, yeah. It's not that good there, you know. A little cool feature too is that the camera has an inbuilt intro volumeter. I know I get to say that, but basically it makes timeless photography super simple. You don't have to download any third-party app or anything, just do it right in the camera. It's compatible with all of this on its E-mount lenses because it has an E-mount, which basically allows you to get a wide variety of lenses that you can choose from. And this is something that I like so much about your Sony cameras in general, that both AAPC cameras and their full-frame cameras are equipped with E-mount lenses, so you can use all of them lenses on the cameras that they have. Very, very nice. You don't have to get a specific, you know, APC lenses if you don't want to, you understand? Now, a feature that also becomes standard in the ZV cameras, I'm not sure if this was the first one that had it, but it offers a wide variety of uh, filters and these AI effects. We're talking things like skin softening, if you want super soft looking skin, also, this defocus background, which allows us to get more bokeh no matter what lens you're using, is actually pretty cool. Then you also have product showcase mode that automatically switches focus between the subject and the product being showcased. And as I said before, these have all become standard in the ZVE lineup. And then another thing, it does offer a range of different pixel profiles that you can shoot in, like S-Log and Cine and so on. However, personally, I've never liked the the like Cine 3 on the APS-C sensor, whether it is the ZVE 10 or the A6400 and so on. And just don't get it to look as nice you know however for me cine 4 has been an absolutely like a really nice picture profile for me to film in when i want to get a little bit more extra dynamic range so and color grade my videos so uh, keep that in mind and maybe who knows you're a god of uh, <laughs> color grading and using low profiles and you're looking at me like hey i can get this uh, sony s log 3 on a aps sensor to look Oh, beautiful. Then uh, teach me. Now, with all that being said, where exactly does this camera fall short? In my honest opinion, I wish that the sensor was a bit better. And I'm not saying that APS-C sensors are 
bad. I think there's a, such a strange uh, subject. We're not going to dive into that in a rabbit hole. Full frame. APC is just sensors, you know. What I mean is that this is the same sensor as was introduced in the Sony A6300, which was made back in 2016. And they've just used that same sensor on all of their uh, APC cameras since then. And it's a little bit old. Now, old doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's bad. It's just that you can get a lot of better options uh, nowadays, especially in the Sony full frame lineups. And uh, God knows I've heard great things about other, uh, you know, uh, APS-C sensors from other brands. And personally, I really hope that they do upgrade their uh, APS-C sensor. That would be sick. And I would definitely like that. Would, that's something that would excite me a whole lot. Now, again, I'm not saying this is bad. Some of my best work is shot on, you know, Sony APS-C. So it's definitely still a, va a valid sensor. However, they do suffer a lot from something called a rolling shutter when filmed in 4K. That's basically when you shoot the moving subject or you move the camera, the lines become wobbly like you can see here. And it's something called the yellow effect and it's not pleasing at all. I don't really like that. Now, when it comes to photography for the ZV-E10 specifically, it obviously can take good photos. I've used this only a 400 a lot and as we've now established, it's the same sensor. So you can get beautiful pictures with it. However, you know, have the camera. It does lack a uh, viewfinder. There's no viewfinder on it. And to me, that is actually something that I use a whole lot myself for photography. So I, I've i just found that I mainly have just used the ZV-E10 for filming. It's fantastic for that. And it's really, really small. It's actually smaller than the A6400. But I wish, you know, I just like the viewfinder when I'm taking photos. You know, there's no viewfinder here and I don't use the screen all the time. But for filming, I never use the viewfinder. So... That is also something that you should uh, maybe keep in mind. Now, with all that being said, though, then who is this camera actually for? Well, the Sony ZV-E10 is a camera that is specifically designed for content creators and vloggers who need a lightweight, compact and a versatile camera to create high quality videos and photos for their online channels and or social medias. And that's another thing I haven't touched on really. It's like the, the design of this camera is so minimalistic that it just makes it like really easy to operate you don't really need like a hell of a skill like a big cinema camera or anything you can basically just pick up this camera and it's filled with all of these uh, like automated options this makes uh, filming a breeze very simple now other than that it's a great little piece but don't uh, expect maybe you know cinema level uh, cinematography from it but what you do get is a small body that definitely delivers on what is promised so it's time for the million billion dollar question is this camera still worth it? Drum roll, please. Smack that like button. Smack it, please. Well, if you're a beginner or simply just somebody who's looking for a small, little, budget-friendly camera that can film pretty decent videos and take some decent photos, it's also really, really small. And uh, as I said before, it doesn't break your bank nor your back because it ain't that heavy. <laughs> then uh, my answer would be yes, it's definitely you know, still uh, worth it. Now, if you have a little higher budget or you simply want to, you know, get a camera that is pretty sick, then uh, by all means, check the review of the brand new Sony ZV-E1. It's right here. 